Hello, welcome to uh, this video. This video is designed to um, give you some information on the sixth form offer at Noel Academy. It forms part of a range of videos, mostly done by subject leaders who discuss the individual requirements for their subjects at Noel Academy, and they'll talk you through um, what their course contains, what the entry requirements are, and what it enables students to do at the end. What I want to do in this video is just to discuss the overall offer at Noel Academy and why we've chosen a specific um, curriculum pathway for, for students. Um, at this point, I'm just going to share my screen with you just to go through a very brief presentation. Um, so our, hopefully everyone is now um, seeing our screen. The first thing I need to say is that all applications uh, are done through Kent Choices for You. And when students go on to Kent Choices for You, they will see not only Noel Academy Sixth Form, but also all the other Sixth Form providers in Kent. And I raise this because it's important to note that as much as I want to see as many students as possible back into our sixth form, um, we have to acknowledge we may not be the right choice for every single student. And it's important that students look at a variety of options and we will help them with that and take them through that process to make sure that they're making the right choice for them. Um, equally, um, when you are making choices, have multiple choices, have at least a fallback offer. Um, we can't guarantee what your grades will be come um, the uh, autumn. Um, after you've completed your GCSE exams. And for some students, they may not make the entry requirements and need something to fall back on. For some students, they may do way better than they were expecting to. And having an ambitious um, application into um, a school to look at certain courses may be appropriate as well. But don't just you know look at one place and go, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Because ultimately, it's much easier to find places at this time in the academic year than after the GCSE results um, come out. As I mentioned before, um, all of the information regarding our courses is on the website. So if you missed our information event, um, then just go onto the website um, and uh, look through all of the information that's there. Um, there are two types of courses that we offer at Noel Academy, level two courses, which are at the same standard at GCSE and level three courses. The level two courses that we offer are hair and beauty and catering, and they are designed um, for people who want to go into low specific industries and they are a full-time commitment. So if you do hair and beauty, that's the only thing you study. If you do catering, that's the only thing you study. And it is really designed for people who've got to express interest in those areas. And then we do level three courses and we do um, level three courses are the next step up from GCSEs. Most people are familiar with A-levels, that is a level three course. And it's the bridge between um, GCSEs and undergraduate study at university, or they're just another high level qualification before going into technical apprenticeships or employment. Now, I've mentioned A-level, but we don't offer those. We offer the IBCP, the IBDP, and some vocational subjects. The IBCP is the International Baccalaureate Careers Programme. The IBDP is the International Baccalaureate Diploma Programme. And vocational subjects, although they sound as though they're work-related, they are loosely, but they're still very academic. So those are subjects like criminology, applied law, um, and health and social care. Um, so why do we offer the IB and not A-levels? Well, we offer them because I think it's the best course for students. Um, it has yeah, academic standing, um, and that's global academic standing because the International Baccalaureate is studied around the world. Um, it provides them with diverse learning opportunities. Um, and most importantly, it develops their soft skills. We were finding that when we did A-levels, although we were very successful at delivering A-levels and the students did fantastically well, when it comes to write CVs for universities or personal statements or make applications for jobs, and they got to the bit about personal characteristics, and they were able to list what they studied and how well they had done. And then the page appeared to be fairly blank. They didn't have an awful lot of um, achievements outside of those academic studies to fill in. The IB contains a core program, which um, gives you those soft skills or certainly enhances those soft skills. So not only does it allow people to fill up those personal statements and CVs with really um, outstanding achievements, um, but it also gives students the confidence and the experience of dealing with um, fairly alien environments and being able to be successful in those. Um, and certainly since we, we've started that, we've seen a real um, uh, increase in the independence and the aptitude of our students to be able to present themselves in a very positive light. Now, as I've stated, we offer both the IBCP and the IBDP in the sixth form. Um, they are taught together, but they are very different. And I'm going to go through um, the differences between them at this moment in time. So the IBCP is made up of two types of course. One is vocational studies. And if you do the IBCP, you need to do 
um, at least one vocational qualification. And we've always offered these at Knoll Academy and they're subjects like criminology, um, finance, health and social care, um, sports studies. Um, and they're all there. They're all level three qualifications. They all have university recognition and they are vocational studies. So you need to do one of those in the IBCP and you need to do at least two IB courses. Now, IB courses are very similar to A-level. So instead of A-level chemistry, it would be IB chemistry. And they're entirely academic. So we have chemistry, biology, physics, maths, English, um, history, geography. Um, and these are IB courses. Now, students have a complete free choice of those within our blocking structure. So you can do physics, chemistry, and then, for example, criminology, um, or you can do English, maths. So there's no limitation to the, the range of subjects that they do, except for the, the blocking structure, which we'll come to at the end. We would like students to do at least four courses if they're doing the IBCP, which can be two vocational and two IB, or it could be three IB and um, one vocational, but we'd like students to, to opt for um, four subjects. Now the IBDP is highly academic. It's the same course that is offered at Seven Oaks School. Um, it has no vocational elements. So this is just choosing the IB subjects. Um, and students study six courses, three at a higher level and three at a standard level. Now, it's important to note at this point that standard level is not easier than higher level. It's just that higher level um, is a bigger qualification. So standard level is about half the size of a higher level um, qualification. Although they're studying six, to give you an idea in terms of time scale, it's roughly the equivalent of doing five full A levels. Um, but one of the things with the IBDP is you don't get the same freedom of choice that you do with the IBCP. So you have to take a subject from each of the blue boxes. So um, one is studies in language and literature, which is basically you have to do English. You have to do language acquisition. And I know at some this point, a lot of people are going, I really don't want to do an MFL. Most of the students we have doing IBDP at the moment do ab initio language, which is basically learning a language from scratch. Um, so you don't need to reach the same level of aptitude and they do it as their standard, one of their standard level qualifications. So it's not as onerous um, as people feel. You have to do individuals in societies, which is a humanities based subject. So geography, history, social, cultural anthropology. Um, there's a whole range of subjects we offer in that box. Sciences, so maths, uh, sorry, chemistry, physics and um, biology from that box. And then the final box, mathematics. Now, students then have a choice to do a six subject, and that can come from the green box, the arts, and we offer IB art and IB film studies, or they can just double up and pick a second subject from any of the other blocks. Now, I need to stress at this point to anyone who's envisaging doing this, this is seriously hard work. You will have a full time timetable and then we'd be expecting you to do quite a lot of work outside of school to meet the needs of this qualification. Um, but if you manage to get through it, um, it will set you up fantastically for some of the high level degrees, which are exceptionally difficult to get into. And I'll come on to that um, in a second. In terms of the actual subject choice, regardless of whether you pick the IBCP or the DP, you do do the same qualification as the individual. So if you pick to do chemistry as an IBCP subject, you will be in the same room doing the same course as the students who have chosen to do chemistry as an IBDP subject. The only difference between the two is that with the IBDP, you are um, constrained to doing those six subjects across all the blocks. With the IBCP, you have a little bit more flexibility in the number of courses you study and what sections they come from. And to give you an example of a school that does, does both and has done both for a number of years, Dane Court Grammar School um, have roughly equal number of students doing the IBCP and the DP. And it doesn't follow um, that the more intelligent students, the ones with better academic performance do the DP. Um, it's just depending on what they want to do at the end of it. So those people who want to go into medicine, into law, into engineering are doing the DP. For those people who've got other interests, a lot of the time they would be picking the CP to do. Now, obviously, the IB is an unusual qualification for schools to offer. It's not unusual if you're in the independent sector, but it is in the state. So why do more state schools not offer it? Well, the reason is because it costs a fortune to offer. It costs about three to four times more than the A-levels to offer. Every single member of staff who delivers an IB course has to be trained by the IB, which is a very expensive process. Um, for A-level, you don't. You can grab anyone you like and ask them to teach A-levels. Obviously, you would try and quality assure that process. But ultimately, the IB is an expensive course. And that's why generally it's only done by top independent schools. But we're covering the cost because, as I said right from the start, we think it is the best course for the students um, at Noel Academy. Now, 
In terms of university admission, to give you some idea of how the IB is seen by university, um, David Howes, Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Bath University, said, we love the IB, and there's two main reasons for it. Firstly, the amount of teaching time students get is very similar to undergraduate degrees. And secondly, it really prepares them in terms of independent study. Um, when we looked at uh, universities who reviewed um, IB against A-level uh, across a whole load of metrics, as you'll see on the slide, um, the IB came out significantly better at A-level for, for every single characteristic, encouraging independent, nurturing an open mind, developing self-management skills. IB students generally were seen by universities to have better skills than A-levels. Um, and if you look at the, the outcomes for students, both in gaining university places and then what they do at, uh, while they're at university. So IB diploma students were three times more likely than matched A-level students to enroll in top 20 higher education institutions. And what I mean by matched students is uh, an IB student um, uh, matched against an A-level student with a similar academic profile at GCSE. Um, if the student had then gone on to do the IB, they were three times more likely to get into one of the top 20 universities in the country. IB diploma qualifiers were 7% more likely to achieve a first and 40% more likely to either achieve a, a first or a 2-1. So as you can see, if you can get through the IB diploma, it really sets you up fantastically well um, to get into the best universities and then progress on to some of the hardest careers to get involved in. In terms of the IB careers programme, that's been um, around for significantly less. The IB diploma has been running for over 50 years, the careers programme only for about 10. But the first Russell Group university admittance came in 2017. And Russell Group are basically a group of the top 20, 25 universities in the country. You know, your Oxford, your Cambridges, your Durham's, your Warwick's, your Southampton's. Um, in 2019, the University of Cambridge accepted its first IBCP student. Um, University College London LC have taken um, IBC students, again, recognised as some of the best universities in the world. For us as a school, um, we have our first cohort of IBDP students in year 12, so we don't have their results coming through yet. Um, our last cohort of IB students who went through, every single student who applied for a university got a university place after doing the IBCP. 25% of those ended up at one of those Russell Group universities. Um, and of those students, 21% of our CP students who've now gone through universities have achieved a first and 70% have achieved a first or an upper second class degree. So as you can see, um, it's still a very academic uh, qualification and it still sets people up fantastically well. As I said right at the start, we also offer level two courses at Noel Academy in Heron Beauty and Catering. They're absolutely fantastic for those people who visited Noel Academy or attend Noel Academy. Um, you'll know the facilities that we offer for catering are absolutely first rate, the same with the hair and beauty. Um, those are courses that um, students should only consider, though, if they've got real um, interest in that area, because that is their full time study. Um, and, in, and it also involves work experience going out to those kind of industries. But if you're interested in those, the provision for them is absolutely fantastic. One other thing. I need to mention, as well as those academic studies, we expect you to do a few other things um, in the sixth form. Um, both the IBCP and the IBDP um, has a core learning element, um, service learning, personal and professional skills, language development, reflective project to CP, creativity, activity, service, theory of knowledge and extended essay in the DP. And these are the things that develop those soft skills that I talked about right at the very start and make your CVs massively more interesting for anyone who's reading them, both in employment and at university. So there are core components of offering the IBCP or the IBDP. We also have a tutor programme which has a relevance curriculum and core reality. And then finally, we do an enrichment program after hours um, where we look at things like, you know, giving students um, cooking lessons, beauty therapy, yoga. Um, we've got students who go into gym membership. There's a whole range of activities we expect students to take part in. Um, our year 12s and 13s absolutely love that provision. Um, it really is something that uh, they enjoy um, and hopefully uh, develops their emotional well-being. The last thing I just want to touch on is our proposed option blocks for 2023-25. Um, the subjects in yellow are those vocational qualifications. The subjects in green are our um, IB courses that we offer, and the two in blue at the bottom are those level two courses. Um, if you want to do the IBCP, um, you need to pick at least one yellow and at least two greens. And if you look in block A, block B, block C, block D, you can only pick one subject from each block because they're timetabled at the same time. Um, so you can, for example, in block A, choose to do health and social care and film studies because they would just be clashing. Um, 
If you want to do uh, all um, yellow subjects or all green subjects, you can do that as well. So as much as we would encourage people to do the IBCP core, which is at least one yellow and two greens, if someone wanted to do criminology, sports science, and finance and fashion or vocational subjects, um, we would allow them to do that. And equally, if you wanted to just do physics, business, biology and maths as the green subjects, we would allow you to do that. You wouldn't get the IBC P qualification at the end, but you would get individual accreditation for every single one of those qualifications. And they carry UCAS points and the, and the same kind of status as doing an individual A-level does. If you're interested in doing the IB diploma program, because it's such a complicated um, uh, selection of courses, both at higher level and standard level, um, when you go onto Kent Choices for You and go into Block E, where it says IBCP Core, there's an option to select IBDP. You just click IBDP, and at that point, we would then give you a phone call and work out your individual options. So we wouldn't expect you to make all the option choices on this grid. Um, that basically is our sixth form offer. Um, have a look at all of the subject videos to give you some understanding of um, what subjects are, are available. And I just want to go back to the very first point. I would like to see the overwhelming majority of students back at Knoll Academy in the sixth form. Um, however, we also recognise that that may not be the right choice for them. So please explore all the other options on Kent Choices for you. Um, have a conversation with us about what you feel um, you want to achieve and whether we're the best um, fit. We will answer those questions honestly. Um, and I wish you the very best in this process. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this video.